Bethelsdorp in Port Elizabeth harbors a rich history and crucial heritage of the region. It's part of the history of the Khoi people and their interaction with Christianity. The church here was erected more than 200 years ago in 1803 by Johannes Theodorus van der Kemp of the London Missionary Society to serve the 600 Khoisan people living there. The stories of Bethelsdorp are still being told. Our reporter Lerato Tipa filed this report. From a distance, it looks like an ordinary church, but inside, it's home to an array of rich historical literature. Pride of Place is the oldest Bible in Southern Africa, assembled in 1664 and later brought to Africa by missionaries. Not too far from that is the oldest baptismal, nearly 200 years old. It was used by the likes of Van der Kemp and David Livingston for the entrenching of Christianity on the Khoisan. The Van der Kemp Memorial Church is now known as the Bethelsdorp Congregational Church. The church also served as a refuge for the Khoisan from harsh colonial system, and it is still the spiritual center of Bethelsdorp. With uh, Van der Kemp leading them and leading them in his way to God, uh, it must have meant some hope for them that they believed now in in a living God. Uh, I, I don't think this church would have been here if the people around the church didn't grow in Christianity. He believed that Christ is uh, the, the person to believe in, the formula to, to get to heaven, and uh, the church is still here. And this church today is still relevant. The ancient church bell rings in the distance. It was erected in 1815. Under the colonial regime, it was called the slave bell. When it rang, the slave's new punishment is forthcoming as someone had done something wrong. They would then gather at the bell only to be punished collectively, usually made to work in the nearby salt pans for a day without pay. But under Van der Kemp, the same slave bell became a church bell, used to call the Khoisan to church. We must be very clear, Christianity is the theoretical part of the spiritual part of which the Khoisan was very aware of because Khoi and San people were spiritual people. So Christianity just came to prove in theory that what we have been doing all this time, praying to God, being grateful towards God, was just the practical thing um, for them to come and show us. But this area do have significance for us. A square stone house named Livingston Cottage still stands. It is believed to have housed Dr. David Livingston. He spent countless hours teaching the Khoisan about Christianity and how to read and write. This small room also served as his prayer room. Being a mission station, I, I strongly maintain that um, it was here for a purpose of help and it should actually continue that way. Yeah. And the, all, the elders of this area should continue with that kind of maintenance and continue with the nature and the recognition of the culture and continue through the legacy of the children, as I said. Evelyn Chetty is now 85 years old. She's one of the oldest residents here. She lived during a hard time and recalls the day her husband was arrested and detained because he didn't have a pass to live here in Bethelsdorp. Like many here, the church became her lifeline. Yeah, I mean the church thought from that time up to now was here. Yeah, and they help. They uh, come around every month, they come and around, have, say a prayer and so, you know. The custodians of this historical site want it to be preserved for future generations and want to see it declared a national heritage site or made a museum. This is the first house that was built next to the church in 1803 and was used to house missionaries. But it is now just a structure with a rich history. Residents here are asking government to make it into a museum so that the many tales of the Khoisan can be preserved. Lerat Otipa, SABC News, Port Elizabeth.